So call 1-800-468-2100. I knew you would. You're watching USA, America's all entertainment network. Geraldine, I beat Logan in the standing L case. He's also angry because Jamie preferred to stay with Raven and me rather than him. I'm sorry, Skyler, but I can't believe that a man of Logan Swift's integrity would agree to represent this Dr. Angler simply for the sake of revenge. <laughs> then you don't know Logan as well as you think you do. Oh, I think I'm somewhat better acquainted with him than you are. Well, what do you say his reason is then for staying in town? He simply wants to establish his new practice here. Really? A man of his professional experience wants to relocate from New York to Monticello? Stranger things have happened. Well, possibly, but it seems obvious to me that he's coming here specifically to make trouble for me. I'm sorry, but it's not obvious to me. What do you say his reason is for staying there? Come. It is as he told me. He simply wants to, uh, what is the phrase, get back to his roots. And the fact that Raven is here has got nothing to do with this decision. Skyler, Logan is an honorable man. He left New York simply because he was unhappy with a legal career that put him on the wrong side too many times. Geraldine, maybe that's what Will he told you, but stop I... Stop all this nonsense. I tell you, I know Logan. There may be any number of reasons why he agreed to represent Dr. Angler. As for Jamie, he knew that Jamie would be happier with you and Raven. He did it for the child. Let's hope so. Excuse me. I'm not going to give up this investigation. Okay, what about your grades? Grades? How can I be concerned with grades when we've hit on something so big? Preacher, you have got to admit it yourself. There is something very strange going on in that empty office. All right, I admit it. Why don't you just let me check it out while you study it? Right? Well, if you think you're going to grab all the glory by yourself, you can forget it. There's a secretary who answers the phone for two companies and a mysterious Mr. Pendleton who thinks he works for both of them. Jody, why don't you just leave it to me and I'll figure it out. You just want me to miss out on all the excitement. Jody, this is not a game. It's a murder case. And I'll be damned if I'll be responsible for you flunking out of school because of it or because of me. Where are you going? I'm gonna get some air. I'm gonna think this thing through on my own. Problems? Looks that way, doesn't it? Can I help? Well, that ought to do it. Gents, I know it's a tight squeeze in here, but I uh, guess if we all promise to have our garlic and onions on the same day, we'll make out just fine. Well, I gave up garlic for Lent. <laughs> yeah, well, that probably means you'll end up working in the tactical command room when Gallagher and I decide to order out for Italian food. Calvin, I got your report for you. Oh, good. Dr. Calvin, these are the uh, two new men assigned to our special task force. This is uh, Detective Gallagher, oh, yeah. Dr. Kavanaugh, Detective Pinella. How's it going? How are you? Dr. Kavanaugh's been assigned to us full-time. Full-time is right. I've been up all night. Listen, it's just preliminary, but it's the autopsy report on your weasel Watson. Yeah, anything interesting? More than interesting. I'd say startling. Oh, what is it? Weasel was shot with the same gun that was used to kill the Wellington co-ed, Maxine Burton. to be a magician to help me out of this one. What do you mean? There just aren't enough hours in a day to do everything I want to do. Oh, that's a familiar freshman's lament. Give it time, you'll adjust. <laughs> How long did it take you? Oh, about a year. A year? No, I'm just kidding. Actually, it, it wasn't too bad for me, because I went right from high school into college. Mm. But you took a couple of years off, didn't you? Yeah, I thought it would help. Ah, uh, trouble is. You forgot how much time and energy it takes to go to class and to study, right? You're right. You know, in high school, I used to do my homework sitting in front of the TV. 
I sure can't do that here, can I? Not for long. And survive. Well, you do a lot of extracurricular activities. I mean, how do you fit it all in? Oh, you mean the football team? Yeah. I'm just a dumb jock on a scholarship. No, I read the article on you in the school newspaper. Straight A's the first three years. How do you have time for all that in Hollis, too? Sometimes I don't. But she understands. Well, we've known each other for a long time. Since we were kids. Our families have known each other for years. Same politics, belong to the same clubs. I guess in long-term commitments like that, people make allowances. You two must be so close. Yeah, I guess. But you've been together so long. Well, it's not really by choice, though. When we got older, our getting together just seemed like the natural thing for us to do. There's only one thing missing. What's that? We never fell in love. Hello, Geraldine. Raven, dear. My word, I've had more visitors today than I've had all month. Didn't expect to see you here. Oh, well, we're just having a little uh, family discussion. Uh, yes, well. My goodness, Geraldine, where'd you get all these flowers? Oh, they're not for me, they're for Shelley. I thought you said they were for you. What well, did I say that? Yeah, you said that Gunther delivered them here because originally they were sent to my house by mistake. Oh, yes, well, what I meant was some of them were for Shelley and some were for me. Well, I'm glad you're both here because it makes it easier. I know that both of you have been worried about me and... Uh, Oh, wait a minute. So that's what this little family discussion was about, huh? Now, really, Raven, there's no need for you to assume something. Oh, I don't assume anything. You both look as guilty as hell. Raven, I think this is something that you and I should discuss privately. No, Scholar, I don't think this is something that you and I should discuss privately. I think it's something that I have to work out on my own. And I think that if you both love me as much as you say you do, you'll let me do that. Ballistics has made a positive match of the two bullets. Both were 22 caliber then. Yeah, here's a photograph of it. You see the markings on the two bullets are identical. Wow. Which now narrows down to a million and one twenty twos. Now, actually, the odds are better than that. According to ballistics, the rifling on this particular gun is different from any of the traditionally uh, manufactured 22 caliber pistols. So you're saying you think it's a Wildcat manufacturer? A very precision conscious one, yeah. How many grooves in the barrel? Fifteen. Eight. Fifteen? I always thought a six was about average. As a rule, it is. According to the uh, information we got out of the computer after we fed all this stuff into it, these bullets were fired from some kind of very fancy, handmade target pistol. There's no sign of anybody. Did you use this? No. It says Pendleton on it. I didn't write it. Yeah, let me talk to Mr. Kale. Please. Since obviously this is something between you two, if you'll excuse me, I'll make myself scarce. I did was say that I need time to work things out. Oh, honey, I can read between the lines. What's that supposed to mean? But what is working it out for yourself supposed to mean? Exactly what it says. May I? Well, given your history, that might prove dangerous. Skyler, I'm not gonna go run off with Logan Swift. I I've only seen him three times since he's been in Monticello. Four. Four? Yeah, three times at our house and once in the judge's chambers. What do you do? Keep a personal diary every time I meet with him? Good God! You're my husband. Where's all this trust we're supposed to have? Do you know that he challenged me yesterday? Great. 
Why don't you two meet in the morning and blow each other's brains out? Come on, don't play the misunderstood wife with me. I didn't ask for this. You tired of this marriage? You want to back out? No. Honey. I love you. So... Why isn't Logan fighting for Jamie? I'm not sure. I went to see Alicia. Well, I don't think you should have done that, honey. You might jeopardize the Dr. Anglin negotiations. I don't care. I wanted to know why she thought she could influence you so easily. What did you find out? Nothing. Except, even though she looks like she's trying to hurt you, she still wants you. Well, she can't have me. I'm going to go to the country club and give Jamie his first swimming lesson. I'll see you later. Oh, Beth, when I first heard that you had collapsed at WEON that night, I felt so guilty for having pushed you to talk about Miles Cavanaugh. I'm sorry, I, I never realized you were under that kind of a strain. Well, Dee Dee, it wasn't your fault, it was my own. What, overwork? Oh, yes. Trying to avoid the very question you were asking me. Why, after Miles and Chris have broken up, am I so reluctant to pursue him? Well, you had a couple of weeks in the hospital to think about it. Come up with any answers? Well, I, I didn't come up with all the answers, but I, I have some idea. <laughs> well, are you going to keep me in suspense, or are you going to talk about it? Well, I, um, I went back to, like, the high school crush I had and, um, other, other men in my life. There were two. Um, one was a medical student, and, um, the other was a director of a clinic where I interned. Mm -hmm. They were, um, no, they were basically just affairs of convenience. Oh, they were there and you were there, so... Oh, it was just, right. It, they were just comfortable. Nothing more. I mean, looking back on it, it really, uh, we really asked nothing from one another, so consequently very little was given in return, which was really quite fine with me at the time. That, that doesn't sound like you at all. You're not, uh that cold. I'm surprised. Well, um, did you see that was me then? And now? Now? Now, um, now I, I need. Good. Good, I'm glad because you deserve so much more. Dee Dee, I need to the bottom of my soul. I can't tell you how naked and alone I feel. I'm so afraid. Okay, so they were both shot with the same gun. Now, what connection could a low-life Monticello snitch possibly have with a straight-A college co-ed? That's not my department, Calvin. <laughs> okay, and let's figure this out. Now, we know that uh, Weasel was probably shot to keep him from talking to me about Rollo Greentree, right? That's right. Out of town enforcer you told me about? Yeah, he's the only name we've been able to come up with. Uh, it's got any any connection with this movement to try and organize Monticello's underworld. What's Maxine Burton got to do with that? That guy would like to say is a good question. What about the other three students that disappeared? This is what you call complicated. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, listen, you're going to pass this information on to the Wellington police? Well, for whatever good it's going to do. I mean, the cooperation we've been getting on the Burton case so far is absolutely nil. And now with this mess. OK, well, I got to get some sleep. Good luck, guys. Oh, thanks, Doc. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks a lot.
Gents, I think it's time to bring in the brass. I'm going to talk to Mike Carr and the chief about this one. Yes, sir, Mr. Kale. Hey, you there! You know, you told me once that the best way to conquer fear is to go right through it and get oh, to the other side. I knew I'd regret having said that statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you really love Miles, you're going to have to try. I don't know if I can, Dee Dee. Sure you can. I, don't, I really don't know if I can. You can if you think you can. Hey, babe. Uh, hi, honey. How are you? Hello. Glad to see you. Mm. Hi, Beth. Hi. How are you doing? Much better, thank you. I'm not back at the suicide prevention hotline yet, but I'm feeling much better. Good. You know, I just came from a meeting at Mike Carr's office, and he's uh, trying to put together a professional staff to sort of help this uh, special task force that he started. Do you think we could persuade you to come aboard? Uh, Calvin, she just got out of the hospital. I know, I know, but uh, Dr. Kavanaugh just joined us as a medical consultant, and I really think a psychiatrist would be very helpful. Miles Kavanaugh, huh? Yeah. Well, look, I'm on press it. If it's too much too soon, Beth, then just... Oh, no, 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 no. Um, I'd love to be of any help that I could. <laughs> you know, I don't think college is going to be that much help to me. What do you mean? In the job market. Well, you know Tess McAdams, don't you? My roommate. Right. She's having a lot of trouble getting a job after graduation. Hey, so am I. Uh, yes, but you're rich. You don't need a job. Oh, well, you obviously haven't gotten to that chapter in psych. What chapter? On dependency. It's not healthy living off your parents' money your whole life. Yeah, but still. I know. Gives me time to look around, take my time before I make a decision. Preacher, what's wrong? Hey, look, uh, thanks for the chat. Yeah. I'll, uh, check you guys later. Is this your idea of studying rap and self preppy? You know, I'm not even going to answer that. Why don't you just tell me what happened? I almost got caught at that building on Post Hill Road. Now, whatever is going on over there, they don't want no witnesses. You mean you saw somebody? No, they saw me, and now they know that somebody's watching them. We just may have blown our chance to find out who they are. Well, if you would have let me come with you, that might not have happened. No, if you had gone, we both probably would have got caught. Okay, what are we going to do about it? Maybe we should just turn over everything we have and give it to the Wellington police. No, it's better to spill everything to Calvin Stone or Monticello. And in case you forgot, I'm an ex-deputy on that force. Yeah, and they are involved in the case, aren't they? Oh, you know, Preacher, I was just sure we could do this on our own. What's better this way? You're gonna have more time for your schoolwork, and I'm gonna go see Calvin Stone the first thing in the morning. got an awful lot of energy. This new assignment really has you excited, doesn't it? Baby, this could turn out to be the most important assignment I have ever had. Then, Calvin, why all the pacing? This ballistics. The ballistics report came back. It, it says that the bow's got 15 grooves on it and a twist to the right. Wait a second. You're talking to a lawyer, remember? Not a cop. You have to explain this to me. All right, look. When a barrel is made, it's made with a, a tool with a spiraling kind of motion, all right? Now, this is called rifling, all right? Now, when the bullet goes through that barrel, the, the rifling leaves an impression on it that's uh, kind of like fingerprints, you know? So that's why there's never any two alike, right? Right, so from a ballistics report, you should know how many grooves there are inside that barrel and in which direction it's twisted. So what does the twist do? Well, the uh, twist kind of stabilizes the bullet so it doesn't turn end over end on itself as it's going to its target. And what's the problem? Well, the problem is that Miles Kavanaugh thinks that this gun that killed Weasel Watson and Maxine Burton was made by some wildcat firearms specialist. So this isn't any ordinary Saturday night special we're talking about, is it? Far, far from it. The question is, where the hell did the thing come from? Calvin, I don't like it. You know, you've been on this case for just a few days, and already you've been shot at by some kind of a special gun, and I'm concerned. Hey, 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 listen, there is really, really no reason to be, okay? I mean, things, things could get a little hairy, but don't worry, I'm going to be careful. No, sir, we lost him.
get face. How's the ankle coming along, Skyler? It hurts like bloody hell. Well, I wish there was something I could do. You can stop defending Logan Swift. Well, now, see here, you can't go on thinking Logan is a bad person. It doesn't help. Yeah, I'll try to remember that, Charlie. Skyler. I do love you, you know. I am not the enemy. I know, I know. You just caught in the middle. What are you going to do? Despite what you've been saying, Logan hasn't remained in town to get back in his roots. And if he stayed in town looking for a fight, I'm going to give it to him. somewhat disturbed.